You know, I'm a mechanically minded welder fitter fabricator, 36 years. I'm just standing here admiring the ingenuity, the engineering, uh, the work that it would take to make this thing. Back in probably the 1890s, uh, somewhere in there, 1875, um, you know, the mechanism that it takes to make that sickle move back and forth to actually mow the grass, the straw, the hay, um, and then you got all your arms and levers here. I'm not exactly sure what that does. I've seen a lot of things, but I'm not sure what this part of it up here does. That's a sickle blade right there. And these are actually the cutters. These are the combs, forces everything in. That goes back and forth like this. And it's all driven by this big wheel in here, the tall wheel. Okay, and it, the, it's horse drawn and it moves that direction through the, the hay field. So anyway, just old American ingenuity. Uh, you know, I guarantee it's older than you are. Uh, it's older than anybody that watches this video because uh, I'm sure this is uh, 1875-ish, 1880, 1885, something like that. So anyway, you know, brought some stuff out here to cut, uh, to sharpen, you know, a couple of my knives, a couple of my favorite knives. Let's see if I sit on this, if it won't tip over. <laughs> uh, brought some sharpers. We got the long handle. Okay, we have the four and one sharp and spark mini, and then we have the sharp and spark. They uh, both have the uh, fire starter screwed into the handle. This one's got a bottle cap, or excuse, yeah, bottle cap, a bottle opener on it right there. Reshaper sharpener for kitchen knives, sharpener for all blades. You unscrew the black from the red as in the sharpened spark, okay, and that's where your that's where your sparks are. Really cool. Nylon, tungsten carbide. And uh, so we'll just lay them up here for right now. Um, I've called it my Hawaiian knife. That's where I bought it is in Hawaii. And that would be this one right here. All right, you've seen it several times got about a 10 11 inch blade on it I reconfigured completely uh, changed the blade thinned it down a lot ground on it and uh, now we got a piece of paper that's sort of equivalent to our Denver magazine paper you know and if you can make them cut like this clear out at the tip and I'm gonna make the paper harder to pick up and yes we do have to pick the paper up you know and make it cut along like that the body of the blade I got to tell you right now, if you can go around the paper bent and it didn't tear, it just kept cutting and the paper kept turning and I kept cutting and that's pretty cool. I've never cut around like that, you know. And um, then I've got another knife here. Uh, and this is a kitchen knife. It's a Japanese made knife. I buy it in Hawaii. Um, I buy them over there and then bring them back here and sell them. They're about two and a half uh, new. I buy them used, sell them for $85. And it is also very sharp. So how would I sharpen a knife like this? Well, it would look like this. Got a <laughs> so I'm pinching my butt. There. All right. So we got two corners here. We got a, a 90 degree corner there and a 90 degree corner there. If people and you wouldn't believe how many people can't figure out what I'm talking about. Take the knife. There's the cutting edge. Turn it over. The back. Those are two 90 degree corners. 90 degree corner. 90 degree corner just exactly like the sharpeners. But my sharpener's way harder than this blade and that's why it works. So on this particular knife, it's got about a five degree bevel on it. It's really thin and it's, uh, it's almost a Scandi grind. It just comes out of the sharpen. There's no hollow grind or anything like that. There's a little teeny tiny secondary bevel right down there that is about five degrees. So you're gonna turn it about, or just set it on there as low as I can get it. And then I'm just gonna brush along lightly from the hilt back here, all right, to the point of the blade. Set it on there about like this. You can see it's it's really uh, a small angle. It's probably five degrees or so. If I really wanted to make it uh, smaller, I would actually grind that plastic off right there so I could get it down lower. Then we just slide it like this. Just brush, don't dig, let it work, don't make it work. And if I wanted it even finer than five degrees, six degrees like this, I'd use my little round one. And it doesn't have the nub of plastic sticking out like that one does right there. So we just brush it along real light, flip it over, do the same thing, flip it over, flip it over, touch it really light. I mean really, really light. Because right now we're just tuning it up, a little, uh, just a little fine tuning here.
turn it over. Now we touch it really light, very meticulously, very deliberately, just like that. Now I'm just polishing the blade and I'm, I'm kind of holding up on the knife sharpener so it isn't actually even using its full weight, which is only about an ounce, just a, right out an ounce, uh, just like that, okay. And there is no little wire edge on there. So my knives, a little wind blowing here, you know, and that's how I sharpen the knives to make them cut like that. Clear out there at the tip. Oop, I lost the paper. There you go. Clear out there like that. Uh, any knife can be made sharp, as long as it's not too thick and the secondary bevel wasn't too thick, you can sharpen them. Tungsten carbide cuts the metal. A lot of people say, oh, you're just standing the fibers, you know, back up. No, not really. Uh, if you cut, cut, cut for a long time, your knife is actually going to be round and flat. There's no little uh, wire edge to stand back up at all. That's like maybe after your second or third cut, you can stand some resemblance of a little wire edge back up. But if the knife is dull, you actually have to sharpen it. It takes some metal off. So that would be this one. Um, then the other one, the uh, we'll call it my Hawaiian knife. I guess that's kind of what the name is here. It's made by United Cutlery and uh, it's crazy sharp anymore. It's just, actually, it's unbelievably sharp. Uh, you can cut, uh, I'm going back to Hawaii in October and I'm taking this knife and I'm going to the gun show and I wanna go over to the fish market and I wanna actually have them cut up their fish, tuna, whatever it is, ask them to use my knife and see how it compares to the knives they use. And of course, I'll see if I can get it on film. Uh, one of my buddies, one of my first dealers, is going with me in October to the gun show over there. So we'll look and see. And to sharpen this knife, it's really no different. All you got to do is, is get your bevel down here. Um, again, it's probably a five, six, seven degree bevel, something like that. And just brush, set it down back here, and go forwards with it, with the corner, 90 degree corner right there, touching the cutting edge just like this. And then light pressure. You can go out in full length like that, drop it right off the tip, right off the point. You can roll it over and come back this way. You can go out this way, come back here. I actually roll it in my fingers and sharpen going both directions. I sharpen going out, I sharpen coming back. When it comes to polishing the blade, I slow down and I touch it very deliberately, very light, just like this. 20 times total, about 10 on each side, really light. Now, yes, you could go and get a thousand grit stone or something like that, and you could make it even sharper right at the cutting edge. You can't really feel uh, a wire edge on my knives. When, when you go up, you go along and up as you're going up like that. You're going out and turn it over and do the same thing and feeling along here. You know, so they're as sharp as they need to be. If you're going to be in some kind of, you know, million dollar contest, who's got the sharpest knife? Um, they would use a different uh, system than I'm using, and yes, they could probably make this knife sharper. But for every tent and purpose that I'm going to use it for, uh, and the demos and demoing my knife sharpeners, that is plenty sharp. Because if you can take a piece of paper and, and cut it that easy, and just cut the radiuses, cut it out here at the tip like this, now I'm going to make paper hard to find. <laughs> Oops. Just like that. This is Brad. Go to sharpensbest.com. Check out the knife sharpeners. Check out what we do. Um, I do almost everything is like a first-time deal. Yes, I've sharpened this knife before. Yes, I've cut the paper before. But everything that I do where I actually say, I don't know if this will work for sure or not, it's a first take. I don't do it several times and then find out something does work. Or if it doesn't work, I go, oh, we ain't putting that on video. I put everything on video, you know. And just let you see it you know because then it's natural it's normal it's how it is it's real uh it's truthful this is brad sharpensbest.com you take off and enjoy the day we're sure enjoying the day see you later